Hello beautiful people, welcome back to 100 Days to ML, where we learn a new machine learning algorithm every day. In today's video, we are going to look at a new deep learning architecture called PyTorch. So let's go. So let's see what a PyTorch is. PyTorch is a Python based scientific computing package targeted at two sets of audience. First is it is used as a replacement for NumPy. Why we should replace NumPy with PyTorch? NumPy, though it is a Python package, it is written completely in C++. So when, when you call a NumPy array or NumPy operation, at the back end, it is computed using the C++ language. Whereas PyTorch is completely written in Python. And NumPy doesn't have a support to GPU. Whereas PyTorch has a support for GPU operation. Secondly, PyTorch is a deep learning research platform that provides maximum flexibility and speed. It provides flexibility because it is written in Python and it can be integrated into any other language using an API. It provides speed because it has support for GPU. So let us see what are the basic things that Python and NumPy has in common? What are basic things that PyTorch and NumPy has in common? PyTorch has all the functionalities and data structures as the NumPy. The only advantages being that the data structure of PyTorch supports GPU usage. As we have seen, the basic data structure of a NumPy is n-dimensional arrays or nd arrays these are also known as tensors which is the data structure of pytorch here i am going to import the pytorch here i am going to create an empty tensor of dimensions 5 and 3 as you can see we have got five rows of three columns of tensors with contains all zeros that because we have called an empty tensor here i'm going to create a random tensor of the same dimensions five rows and three columns here you can see we have got a random tensor of three columns and five rows you can even create tensors with constant values so here what we get is tensor of 5.5 and 3 however the data type is in float we can even create a tensor based on existing ones let's say i want to create a new tensor a that uses the same dimensions of x and instead of being all zeros i want them to be one so new underscore methods take in sizes so here i'm going to get a five rows three columns tensor of ones and in the second one i'm going to use the same size or dimensions i'm going to change the data type to float and i'm going to create random like instead of ones so let's see what output i get here as you can see the first one is the has the same shape or dimensions as that of x and the second tensor b has the same dimensions or shape of a and that of x however in the first one i have got all ones and then second one I got a random tensor. To know the size of a tensor, 
we can use the size method. So x dot size is the size that is 5 comma 3. Tensor operations. We can perform mathematical operations on these tensors. However, there are different approaches or different syntax that can be written for any operation. To demonstrate, I am going to work on addition and multiplication. So let me create a new random tensor of dimensions 5 comma 3 similar to that of x. Here is the first type of addition. So x plus y will give me the addition of x tensors and y tensors and here is the first method for multiplication x star y will give me multiplication result of x and y as we know x is a tensor of empty that is all zeros so anything multiplied by zero will give the result zero that is why the result here then we have an add method and torch that adds two tensors so let me quickly show you as you can see we have got the result of addition and same applies to multiplication we can even store the result in a output tensor and over here i am going to create a output tensor called result add for addition and result mul for multiplication and I'm going to store the results in the output tensor. So here we go. And finally, we have in place operations where dot operation underscore will copy the result. So y dot add underscore x will copy the addition of x and y into y so we got the result here the same applies for multiplication as like in numpy we can use the indi indices for referencing the index values so here i print all rows of the first column of x if we want to resize we can use the view function of torch here i'm going to create a random tensor of size 4 by 4 then i'm going to resize it to 16 and then i'm going to resize it as minus 1 8 where the size minus 1 is referred from the other dimension so let's see the sizes here and let's also see what we have got in each tensor so as you can see x is a 4 by 4 tensor which has 4 rows and 4 columns and y has 16 columns and one and all written in a single row and whereas the z tensor has 8 columns and 2 rows so the result if we have a single element in the torch tensor we can use tensor dot item to print the element as a python number so let's see how it works say i have a tensor of single element that is one so when i print x it gives me tensor of one whereas when i print x dot item i get the tensor okay as i have mentioned numpy and pytorch are similar yet pytorch was created to support gpu usage so what if if i want to convert pytorch to numpy so let's see i have a tensor of all ones of size 5 so here is the result and i want the uh, tensor to be a nd array so you can simply use tensor.numpy to convert it into an nd array from tensor so you can see the output here now if i change the tensor the value of the nd array also changes because internally both of them share the 
same location in the memory. So let me add one to every element in the tensor A and we see all the elements in the ND array B also changes. The same applies even from converting NumPy array to a torch tensor. So let me quickly import NumPy and here you can see the result. So I have created ND array of all ones of five elements. Then I'm going to get those from NumPy to torch tensor. So I'm going to use torch dot from NumPy method. Now I will add one to every element in the NumPy array and it changes the result even in the torch tensor. As mentioned earlier, it shares the same memory location. So I have mentioned that PyTorch was created to give the additional usability of GPU to the NumPy ND array. So let me create a torch tensor that uses CUDA GPU. So I'm going to run this cell only if CUDA is available and we will use torch.device object to move tensor in and out of GPU. So if torch.cuda is available that is check if CUDA is available then device equals to torch dot device of CUDA get the CUDA in my case there is only one that so the result would be CUDA 0 so y dot y equals to torch dot ones like x and device equals to device that is GPU and I'm going to move it to device so as you can see here we were able to move the tensor in and out of the GPU. Hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to subscribe my channel for more videos and hit the thumbs up button below. See you soon in the next video where we will see how to use PyTorch for developing a deep neural network. Till then, have a good day.